Uh, te kite o Wairiwa, Simon Mortlock. Madam Mayor, Councillors, just to introduce Steve Tutar, Chair of the Te Kite o Wairiwa Limited, Ricky Nicholas. Also, director of the company, I'm also director of the company, and my colleague here representing the Renanga is Vanita Wakefield. But, uh, now, we have got a presentation which I've got, I'm lucky that I have Vanita here to support me in presenting it. Basically, um, what we're looking at here in the first slide is current position. The Renanga and Takiti have, over many years, installed, as you know, the canal for Lake. It was apparently designed to, ma to manage the lowering of the lake when it, to prevent flooding is also done primarily also for um, improving the health of the lake, those two objectives. Um, and having constructed the canal, it is now used by the council exclusively for lowering the, flood, the waters of the lake to prevent flooding. The RMA, uh, the uh, a hearing was held in which consent was given to the canal being extended out, this life of the canal being extended out 35 years, and part of that consent process required the construction of a bridge for access across the beach. And, the, uh, and so that was, additional funding was required for that, and basically the council's endowment fund, they've got two endowment funds, have been funding the opening and closing of the, or the, opening and closing of the lake, uh, and in this case they, the endowment funds also funded $200,000 towards the construction of the bridge, uh, and the Renanga and Takedi funded $150,000. And there was a shortfall of about $168,000, which was required to be funded, um, but the, the parties had not reached agreement on how it was to be funded. Now, the endowment funds, uh, which council had been lied upon, lied upon to pay the, the way to, to, for this purpose, wasn't sufficient to meet that additional cost. And so it was a case of looking now to council and saying, well, you know, the Rangas has done its bit. It's, it's funded probably a million dollars worth of expenditure for the lake, uh, opening and, and the lake and uh, providing the canal and providing monies for the bridge. And, and now this council has had a free ride, put it crudely up to now, having used the endowment fund, which was established many years ago, and never had to fund m monies for the opening and closing the lake. So we're asking for one-off small donation from council to the endowment fund, so the endowment fund can pay the balance of the capital cost of that bridge. Uh, ongoing ma monitoring and maintenance. Basically, the uh, ECAN's consent required a si quite a significant number of monitoring programs, looking at the health of the lake. Uh, it was the, the question of um, the maintenance of the bridge, uh, the, the engineering requirements to ensure that it was safe to operate, and uh, these are ongoing obligations. And that was imposed upon the Renanga, or Takiti in this particular instance, because they were to be the owner of the bridge. Now, basically, council said, we don't want to own the bridge, we want the Renanga to own the bridge. It was very generous, considering it's not used by the public, and, and it's, it was designed for the public. And so we would say, well, why should the Renanga and Takiti have this ongoing obligation going forward for what essentially is a committee asset? Um, so we're looking to council uh, to, up, to provide between probably only between 10 and 2015, maybe makes $20,000 a year to the endowment fund to top it up if it's required. Because basically, the whole purpose of this canal was to lower the cost of opening and closing the lake. Mm. It had a number of advantages. You could open the lake and close it very quickly, effectively, without having to dig out the whole beach. The second thing is that it didn't disturb the landscape. And thirdly, it was, very, it was a safe way of opening and closing the lake. And finally, of course, most important of all, it was improving the health of the lake. And you, there's been a report uh, being done for Council and for ECAN showing the consequences of the... Um, since 2009, the trof trophic level index pre-2009, and it doesn't really show the graph effectiveness there because it, it's a straight-line graph, averaged out over the, since, 2000, since 2000 through to the present day. But the reality is, is that since the lake was opened and closed by the canal, through, through the canal, the health of the lake has improved substantially. So, what remains to be resolved? To what extent each party shares the cost of the bridge? We are simply saying the remaining one hundred fifty thousand dollars in providing for the bridge should be what it should be its expectation, and it should only be required to provide that amount of monies. We looked at a concept of a toll for the bridge uh, that didn't find favour with the local residents although I think it would have been a fair process to have done. 
uh, and, say, well, and if the residents won't pay for it, we think the council should support the endowment fund to do so. And who should monitor, maintain, and ensure the building of the, of the bridge? And we again we looked at council the endowment fund to do that. But what we should mostly celebrate is the success of council and the Renanga working together. And I've got to say that the staff that we're dealing with the council is superb. Um, I won't. I will name one person because he's led the process with council over many many years, and that's Graham Harrington. He's been a delight to work with, work with, and uh, we know that he's done his best for the project, and he supports what we're doing. But uh, there's no issues at all in that regard at all. Uh, but what's, what the result is, there's flooding. There's, we can open it close more promptly, but most importantly, health related. That's all I need to say at my end. And now Benita is going to talk about Tioka Bay management plan or the consequences of that plan on Tumbledown Bay and Magnetic Bay. Mm -hmm. Magnetic Bay. Thank you. I was just curious, has anybody actually been to these areas? Are there, has anybody visited it? So during the summer months in particular, you would know that it's a very popular place and we get hundred, literally hundreds of visitors to that area. So when the council um, first put in um, their um, path, the public path, they put it... Sorry, I'll just look it over. They put it to your, our left. Originally, they put the pathway in that way, which was, um, sorry, can you see the arrow? No, okay, it's your right, it's my right, on the right side. And unfortunately, along there is uh, very important Wahitapu sites, um, they, and they were um, totally unaware of that when they put the public pathway through that area, which meant that not only um, was there a lot of foot traffic there, there was a lot of uh, rubbish and a lot of um, people were going to the toilet there because there's no toilet facilities in that bay. Um, and so the Runanga, at their own cost, um, put in and shifted the pathway to the other side, running adjacent to that road on the left side, and put in a much better steer, stairway you know, um, to access in, uh, in at one end and at the other end. Um, and so I really wanted to highlight the fact that we um, we shifted it over to protect that Wahitapu site. And so what we're seeking from um, the City Council is, is in partnership with you is to look at firstly building a better um, park, a car park, because at the moment there isn't, it's really insufficient space. And so we'd like that area to be cleared preferably flattened and with some shingle down, that would be that would make that area so much more safer. Um, and also to put in an erect a toilet both at um, the tumble down and at Magnum Bay. So those that's really what we're asking for. And as you can see there's already been a memorandum of understanding um, in draft form presented and we're still awaiting a response to that. Could I add there too, the car park proposed is on Runanga land. So, and essentially, there is no other provision as far as we're aware for the public going to make, to make sorry, to um, uh, Tioka Bay Reserve now, Park, where they can park going into the park. So this is basically up to now, public have been driving onto this part of the um, Runanga land, or to Kitty land, and parking their vehicles there, but it's not a very satisfactory situation to get in at all. So, so where would the park be? Oh, sorry, I'm trying... It's across the road, and coming from Christchurch uh, towards uh, the, the reserve, it's and on, it's, it's on the left. It's on the left side. It's across the road from the... From yeah, the it's, it's difficult without a, a pointer, so that... I oh, know, yeah. sorry, um, I can't. Is there oh, one? There's your mouth, yeah. right. That side. So that's, that was where the original, where that arrow is. That was the original. We shifted it over to here. The path, and then um, I think it's here. Yeah, that's right. Here, right. that's where the that's where the existing area is where people park. Right. No. Cool. Thank you, Ricky. Oh. Up there. No, the yeah, you have, you have to take. The... So that's the roadway coming in. Yeah. Yes, that's the road. There's the park yes. there. Right. That's where the parking, where the arrow was. Okay. Well, it was. So it was too low. Sorry. And you want you want a, a, a sort of some a gravel part put there. Well, essentially, it's required because what happened is the council had a slip on its on the reserve, and very brightly 
as a result of the slip, wanted to get rid of the water. So it directed the water from the slip onto the Renunga land. Yes. And so essentially made what was essentially a, a reasonably dry field paddock into a very wet paddock. Right. And, and it's basically um, created a problem for itself. Okay. All right. Well, I've got um, 19 seconds, um, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, and um, thanks for the presentation. Two questions, Simon. Just to clarify, the, the site for the car park, um, or the proposed site for the car park, that's on Runanga land rather than council land? Not council land. Yeah, okay. And um, the Tumbledown Bay toilets, or the Tumbledown Bay Magnet Bay toilets, I had some involvement in this a few months ago, and I understood that there was a reasonably good quality conversation going on between our rangers and the Runanga around the possible siting of toilets and the ability to potentially do that within reprioritising some existing budgets. And Great. my thinking was there was a conversation going on about us providing the toilets and the Runanga providing some ongoing maintenance to those toilets. Has that conversation stalled? That, that or is conversation is slightly on? stalled because we understand that the reserve uh, management plan hasn't been has been deferred in terms of completing it. We're just conscious that with Christmas coming. But bluntly, you don't want a situation where we've got literally hundreds of people going to the beach at Tumbledown Bay in particular, and 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 basically having nowhere to go to the toilet and, and to going into the into the uh, sand into the sand dunes yeah, yeah, above yeah. the, the um, burial ground. And that's exactly what has been happening. And been that's happening the thing that we need yeah. to work together yeah, to yeah. avoid. All right. Well, let's see whether we can pick up the toilet conversation outside of the reserve management plan conversation yeah. anyway, <laughs> given the urgency. Yeah. Um, yeah, OK, I mean, that may be a conversation we can pursue rather than this needing to be an LTP matter, but we can certainly look into it as part of our LTP considerations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's wonderful. Thank you very much for going to all of that trouble and for coming over for the um, actual hearing itself. And thank you. Good to see you again. <laughs> thank you.